Welcome to this episode of Eagle Air TV. I'm Lucas Finger. This episode features COVID strains, theater, virtual school, girls swim, and our uke in the know. COVID-19 is nothing new, but more contagious strains are starting to pop up, threatening a lengthy end to the pandemic. Here's a peek into the problem. COVID-19 is an all too familiar sound to millions of people's ears, but recently that sound has been changing. New, more infectious strains of the coronavirus have been discovered in nations around the world and has recently reached the U.S. If, if a new strain is found to be more infectious or more contagious, it might, we might see an increase in cases. Uh, we just don't know a lot about this new strain that's being detected. Um, so far, there's not really been any in Missouri that we know of, but I also don't know if they're actually like doing differential testing as they're doing COVID testing at this point. After many months of lockdowns and preventative safety measures, many are worried this new COVID strain could cause a lengthy end to the pandemic. Yes, I am, because it shows that the um, strands keep adapting. And so if it keeps adapting, it's going to keep going on longer. So that's going to make it difficult for the pandemic to end in general if it keeps adapting. New strains of any virus often leave the vaccine's effectiveness in doubt, and that is no different with the coronavirus. But luckily, scientists are confident that the current vaccines will work on this new strain. As of right now, from what I've read, um, they're anticipating that our vaccines that have rolled out should still help cover that strain of, of uh, COVID, that strain of the virus. So hopefully, we'll, even though it's changing and adapting, hopefully what the precautions we've taken, the vaccines that's been developed will prevent it from really getting bad. COVID-19 is becoming more and more contagious, which is why it's more important than ever to take the necessary precautions to keep yourself and everyone around you safe. For Eagle Air TV, this has been Lucas Finger. Most programs at the high school have been affected by COVID, but theater keeps finding ways to put on a show. Elizabeth Carr gives us more. Even with the new COVID regulations, the show must go on for our Nixa High School Theater Department. Head of the theater department, Allison Fleetwood, says that while things are different, they're safer and open up more opportunities for the students to be in shows. We're doing a musical review and I have three different groups of students. Each 20 students are in them, 22 and one. They get to do performances for me that make them a little bit more vulnerable and I really just get to know them at a, a different level. Even if we have these regulations or don't have these regulations, I think that we can kind of bend our schedule a little bit to maybe um, offer different opportunities to students. The winter musical review rehearsals have had to change to accommodate these unprecedented times. Time because 62 kids in one space is just not what we need. Um, kids are masked, they have their temperature taken at the door every day, so we're trying to be vigilant. If a kid doesn't feel well at all, they don't come. Um, so normally I'm a stickler of kids need to be at rehearsal, they need to be here, but I've been um, just a little bit more lenient with if they're not feeling well, they need to stay home, we need to stay healthy. Mrs. Fleetwood says that scheduling is her most important change when it comes to keeping her students safe. Scheduling is always really hard when it comes to a musical because I'm looking at the student's schedule, I'm looking at my schedule, the choreographer's, music director. It's a game of Jenga that I've got to make sure everybody can be there when they need to be there and are able to um, commit to the program and the show that we're doing. The biggest thing that Mrs. Fleetwood misses is the get-togethers between students and being closer to her weirdos. One of my favorite things about the theater department is the kids' weirdness, that they are themselves and that they're awkward and they're funny and they don't care. Sure, it, like at first glance, we're like, oh yeah, they're, they're super chill and everything. Whenever you really get to know us, we're kind of whack. <laughs> Senior and dance captain of the theater department, Sam Fleming, says that being able to work one-on-one -on -one with other classmates is a great perk from COVID. Um, I really like how the casts are smaller because in past years it's always been like really big casts and I like that it always gave lots of people opportunities and like you could always meet like new people but then again it was also really hard to like get one-on-one -on -one connections with people like get to know somebody personally but like this year since the casts are a lot smaller because we can't have so many people on stage at once it's a lot easier to work with people one-on-one -on -one, make sure everybody gets all their questions answered so, like everybody understands what's going on so you don't have like one person clueless and like a few people like know what's going on 
Being in smaller casts helps everyone find their theater family a lot sooner, something that Sam didn't get to experience as a freshman. The bigger shows, you really couldn't get to know people, but like in the smaller cast shows, like the plays and like the, the swing musical, they were, they were smaller casts as well. So you really got to know people and that's how you make like meaningful connections and you find your family within the group. And this year, it, you're able to do that sooner. Because I feel like whenever I was a freshman, I have had a really hard time like making long lasting high school like theater friends and like finding my place here. And I feel like since this year, it's forcing us to be um, in smaller groups. It's helping the underclassmen find those connections and find that place a lot sooner. Like the theater department means so much to me and I'm so grateful that we're still able to put on shows. I, it's, it means so much to me when people wear their masks because I want to be able to be here and like have this experience and experiences with other people and when other people aren't like following the rules, it, it really hurts, like it hits home because like this has been my home like all of high school. The show is set to be performed in February with details to come later. Being a review, there are many different songs from many different musicals with something you're bound to like. For Eagle Air TV, this is Elizabeth Carr reporting. Virtual schooling is an alternative option for learning in the Nixa School District. Abigail Coburn gives us more. The Nixa Public School District offered virtual schooling as an option opposed to seated schooling. Todd Minx is the senior counselor at the Nixa High School. He says that virtual schooling is another way for students to get their education safely. We um, have our own Nixa developed virtual courses with a few of our teachers um, in some of the core area departments, math, um, some science, um, some history. But we also utilize a program through Springfield Public Schools called Launch. And some of our departments have opted to use those curriculum uh, for those courses and so we have a sort of a mixture between launch and Nixa developed courses. We're very happy that for the most part we feel like we've done a really good job um, being safe with our seated students here but um, you know everyone has their own level of concern about the pandemic and so I think the majority of our students who are doing virtual that was the reasoning behind it. What we have seen is we had a lot of students go to online this semester more so than we've ever had obviously and um, we were disappointed to see some of the struggles and uh, if I had to pinpoint what the issue was I think the biggest thing is most of our online courses um, are sort of rely on self-motivation to check in on the students part to check in every day and make sure they're doing the work there's no structured time that they have to meet or check that course and so I think human nature being what it is we had um, students who sort of procrastinated and got behind and it sort of became overwhelming for some of our students. Sydney Harp is a sophomore at Nixa High School. She started virtual school at the beginning of the year and will continue for the rest of the year. She says that virtual school has been a big adjustment for her. Um, online school has definitely been a huge change in seated school. Not only do I get more uh, free time at home, but um, I'm not as stressed anymore. For me, I go into band for either first or second hour, depending on the semester, and then I go home after and do all my classes on, um, on my computer. Personally, I'm not sure with, if I like seated or online school better. Both definitely have their pros and cons. Um, online school, obviously, um, there's less stress involved for me, and I can um, work on my own schedule, my own pace, but there's also less lessons involved, so I'm kind of uh, learning things on my own more. Virtual school is a good way for students to be able to still do school safely while at home. For Eagle Air TV, this has been Abigail Coburn. The girls swim team still has a season despite COVID regulations. Mariel Strobel shows us a preview of the season. The girls swim team is ready for a new season. Emma Beadle says thanks to the swim team, she can have fun and stay safe. I really like the team and I really like our coach. Um, it's a lot of fun and it's not too much of a time commitment. So yeah, it's just a lot of fun. <laughs> we don't have very many seniors this year. Um, so the seniors are always really fun. So it's kind of a bummer, but the seniors we do have, I'm really excited for and we've, um, like really been protecting them from COVID as much as we can just because so they can go to state. 
coach Pete Hill says that the girls have grown together despite COVID-19. My big thing going through the boys season was to protect the season and to protect your seniors. And what I, what I mean by that is we need to protect the seniors because spring sports last year, the seniors didn't get to participate. They, they lost out of state, they lost out of everything. So I, I really, really uh, drive that message home to protect our seniors and to protect the season so that we can get to state definitely curbed some of the normal things that we can do. We've lost a lot of our, you know, a lot of times we have dinners at parents' houses where all the girls get together and they do something outside of the pool. So we've lost some of that because we're trying to avoid those large group things and that is definitely um, sad for them. This has been Muriel Strobel for Eagle Air TV. The new year comes with new resolutions. TJ looks into the resolutions of NHS students in this next segment of our Uke in the Know. Oh, I didn't see you there. Aloha and welcome to our Uke in the Know. I haven't seen you since last year. Remember your high school years with a yearbook recognition ad. Those are due February 8th and they're now available to all grades go to this link below. Also, don't forget to go out and support your winter sports. You can find schedules on nixathletics.net. Since it's now 2021, I decided to go ask some of our students at NHS what their New Year's resolutions are. Let's take a look. What is your New Year's resolution? To eat healthier and block out the haters. Nice. Have you been eating healthy? I have. Rice, eggs, and meatballs. I do have a New Year's resolution and it is to not lose a single game for the rest of the year. I'm wanting to play college basketball for a D1 school, uh, preferably like Louisville, Mizzou. If you're watching this, you can get, I can send you my film, PE. Be more present and be on my phone less. I have several. Uh, my biggest one is to make healthier choices, mentally and physically. That's good. Have you broken that resolution yet? No. To turn in all my assignments on time. Do you have any New Year's resolutions? I'm hoping to get through senior year without senioritis. Do you have any New Year's resolutions? No. I'm... No. <laughs> no. 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 Thank you for tuning in to our Uke in the Know. Thank you for watching this episode of Eagle Air TV. I'm Lucas Finger. We'll see you next time.